Is Michael Jordan a sociopath? This has been a question that has been debated throughout Jordan's career. The stories we've watched, read and seen sometimes don't paint MJ in the best light. He's hyper competitive, nasty to his own teammates and of course opposition players. But is this just Jordan's personality of being a narcissistic type? As someone who is just the ultimate competitor, doesn't show empathy for others on the court? Or is there more here? In this video we'll present the facts, the stories, that demonstrate why people believe that the great Michael Jordan may be a sociopath. With that said, I put a lot of work and effort and time into this video, so I'd really, really appreciate it if you guys could drop a like to support the channel. If you're new around here, you know what to do, hit that subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Be sure to hit the notification button so you never miss an upload. And if you want, you can follow me on Instagram. With that said, hope you guys enjoy the video. And see where all that trash talking starts when it's 0-0 zero, zero, instead of 5-6 point lead. That's where it started. Let me make this very clear. Words like sociopath and psychopath are thrown around like they're nothing and even used interchangeably by people nowadays. Keep in mind, this is a real mental illness, and it's extreme, so calling someone a sociopath and a psychopath should not be taken lightly. In addition, both terms are completely different. Honestly, who am I to call this man a sociopath? I am not calling him a sociopath at all. I'm just giving you the details and facts on why he could be a sociopath. And I want to make that clear, and very clear. No, I do not believe that MJ is a mass murdering, serial killer, extreme maniac, and he's not a psychopath, like some people online suggest. But, I suspect he shares some sociopathic and narcissistic traits, which make him a different beast and a killer on the court. So in this video, we're going to break this all down. The mind of Michael Jordan, and if he really is a sociopath, or if he's just the highest competitor of all. Let's break it down. Before the video starts, do you believe Michael Jordan is a sociopath or is he just a hyper competitive person? By the end of the video, I want you guys to look back on that comment and see if you've changed your mind. With that said, let's get on to the video. And every day in practice was like that to me. It was a competition. So, to start off with the basic premise of the video, what really is a sociopath? According to Healthline and medically reviewed by Professor Timothy J. Legg, a sociopath is a term used to describe someone who has antisocial personality disorder, ASPD. People with ASPD can't understand others' feelings. They'll often break rules or make impulsive decisions without feeling guilty for the harm they cause. People with ASPD may also use mind games to control friends, family members, co-workers, and even strangers. They may also be perceived as charismatic or charming. In addition, the new edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, DSM-5, says that someone with ASPD consistently shows a lack of regard for others, feelings or violations of people's rights, and people with ASPD may not realize that they have these behaviors. They may live their entire lives without a diagnosis. According to the Hare Psychopathic Checklist, developed in the 1970s by Robert Hare, a Canadian professor and researcher renowned in criminal psychology, which is a diagnostic tool to use and rate a person's psychopathic or antisocial tendencies. The checklist looks somewhat like this. There are different parts, and it's uncommon for a sociopath or a psychopath to have all tendencies, but they may only possess a few. So that's basically the rundown of what a sociopath may look like and the tendencies they possess. But does MJ really have some of these tendencies? He said some things to me that I really didn't like and, um, and uh, I couldn't take it. If you let him ride you, he would ride you to the moon. He would ride you right out of the NBA and out of your mind. To further state what I said previously, in no way, shape or form is this video trying to diminish MJ and his legacy. The man is the greatest of all time. He's unmatched in competitiveness, even by Kobe in my opinion. I think Jordan was just on a whole nother level. He was ruthless. He's an offensive assassin who never shied away from anything because of his hyper competitive nature. Jordan was never afraid of voicing his opinions or getting in people's faces and even fighting with teammates. He wasn't afraid of being frowned upon if it brought him success. 
So it comes as no surprise that there are countless stories from teammates and opponents that prove just how savage Jordan reportedly was. I'm not going to go through each and every story that's out there, but the stories in the video showcase some of his sociopathic tendencies and narcissistic tendencies, which is a mental condition in which people have an inflated sense of their own importance, a deep need for excessive attention and admiration. They've troubled relationships and a lack of empathy for others. So, the first story shows a lack of empathy. Johnny Batch, who was the assistant coach for the Chicago Bulls, said this about Jordan and how hard he would be on his teammate BJ Armstrong, who was a sensitive person. Batch said, BJ Armstrong, very talented player, but unbelievably sensitive. Jordan used to tear him apart every minute. If BJ missed two shots in a row on passes from MJ, Michael would walk to the bench and say, get his ass out. And he wasn't the only teammate that Jordan would go at. He would also bully Bill Cartwright. When the Bulls let go of Charles Oakley, they brought in Bill Cartwright. Jordan resented the loss of his friend and took it out on Cartwright and not the front office. Jordan called him Medical Bill and would intentionally throw impossible to handle passes at him in practice to draw attention to what he perceived to be his bad hands. He also religiously yelled at teammate Rodney McRae when asked by Sports Illustrated a former teammate of MJ had this to say. He's the most viciously competitive player I've ever seen. That's what makes him, I think, the greatest player ever. He practically ruined Rodney McRae for us. When the two players were on opposite teams in scrimmages, Jordan would be in Rodney's face, screaming, you're a loser, you've always been a loser. Rodney can hardly put up a jumper now. McRae ended up retiring that season. These were all his actual teammates, not opposition players. And I didn't even include the time he punched Steve Kerr in the face at practice. The time he drafted Kwame Brown, who was an 18 year old kid at the time. And according to multiple sources, Jordan would say and do everything he could to Brown in order to make him cry in front of the team. And it worked. In like so many players before him, Kwame never recovered. Do you have a gambling problem? No, I, I enjoy it. It's a hobby. If I had a problem, I'd be starving. I'd be hawking this watch. My championship rings. I would sell my house. I would do this. My wife would left me or she'd be starving or my kids would be starving. I do not have a problem. I, I enjoy gambling, but uh, I, I think that people are trying to make it seem like I have a problem. One big trait of a sociopath is the need for stimulation, which states that one trait are those who love to live on the edge. Verbal outbursts and physical punishments are normal and proximity and gambling are common. And I think we all know by now, MJ was a historically notorious gambler. He had an addictive personality and gambling controlled a lot of his life. He used to cheat his own teammate Scotty Pippen out of money too. The story goes that one day before a Bulls contest, the GOAT reportedly arrived in Chicago Stadium early, about the same time that the operations crew was running through pre-game preparations. This included putting together in arena games where three cartoon bulls raced and the crowd would guess the winner. Amin El San recounted a story on the episode of Zach Lowe's ESPN podcast, The Low Post, about how Jordan would leverage the intel he acquired to cheat Pippen out of $100 per game. There's a story of Michael Jordan uh, back in the old Chicago stadium. They show up really early, get his shots up, you know, on game day. And, you know, if you show up to an arena early enough, you'll see the game house people basically going to dry run through everything. Everything from the national anthem yeah, to yeah. the... And one of the things they have is, you know, that thing where it's like uh, the three bulls, or three whatever, yeah. flying and who's going to win? And, they, you know, yeah. Yeah. and so Mike is watching this. is like, oh, you guys already know? And the guy says, yeah, you know, it's all pre-recorded. He's like, all right, do you, so you know who's going to win tonight, right? And he says, yeah, the, the red one. He's like, all right, cool. Fast forward, game... Timeout. Phil's drawn up some play. Mike goes to Scotty. Said, "100 bucks the red one wins." No, no you say way. there's no way this doesn't involve wagering. Yeah. Was that? And then proceeds to do this for the rest of the season, and Scotty never catches Shh. on. Come on, Scotty. Never catches on. Like, How is he always man. making the right one? <laughs> now I get it. 100 dollars per game is not a lot of money, but that's not the point. The point is the premise of cheating your own friend and your best teammate out of money. It's pretty ruthless nevertheless. Whether it's $1 or $100,000, cheating your own friend out of money, it's pretty savage. And even if you don't believe that $100 meant a lot, well, how about this story? Once he cheated an old lady at a game of cards. Former UNC men's basketball coach Buzz Peterson once recalled inviting Michael Jordan over to his house where he played a friendly game of cards with his mother. 
Buzz also recalls witnessing Michael trying to cheat while she left for the bathroom. Just like his game on the court, Jordan goes at all costs to win, money on the line or not. Come on now, you can't tell me that's not ruthless. She was an old lady and he was trying to cheat. Or how about the story of Chuck Daly and MJ? Chuck Daly got the win at golf over MJ by one, and MJ fumed over that loss. The next morning at the crack of dawn, Jordan rang Chuck Daly's room, getting no response. He then went directly to Daly's room and knocked. Then he started to pound the door. He wouldn't go away until he got his rematch. He ended up getting it, and he ended up winning by a shot. But Jordan could not accept losing. And while it made him the greatest basketball player of all time, it reportedly brought out petulant and disagreeable behavior. For Jordan, golf was only one part of the whirlwind schedule, which his teammates were discovering was just the way he liked it. What are you doing today, I'm What's going on? You want to sleep? I remember thinking that. Does this guy ever sleep? <laughs> golf, 36 holes. I'm playing it tomorrow, too. He would do more things and be ready to practice and play as much as anybody. Oh, Michael Jordan. The thing that I remember the most was going out and playing golf with Michael Jordan before a game. And I thought, and I'm going to be exhausted tonight. And Michael just had ridiculous energy and was phenomenal. I felt like I was running in quicksand a little bit. And so you know, it gave me a whole nother level of respect for kind of the freak of nature that he really is. Grab that plate of food, Jim. We played cards in Magic Room to 5 o'clock in the morning pretty much every night. It was so much fun. Right, homie? Yeah, yeah, I'm tired. He's like a bionic guy. Or he'd play cards, play golf, play basketball. Jordan going all the way. I don't know when he ever slept. Finally, after a ball game, he was just lying down. And I looked at him and I said, I think that's the first time he's gone to sleep on the whole trip. Now, of course, Jordan wasn't and isn't the only winner who may have been a sociopath. It can be argued that some of the most famous people on this world are sociopaths. It's what gives them that edge over the norm. For example, Steve Jobs. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, there, there, there's definitely something there, you know, especially if you're you're in competitive sports or something like that, where you just, you, there's nothing yeah. you hate more than losing. Yeah, but Jamie was talking about Kobe Bryant, about what a psycho he was when he was training. <laughs> yeah. And they, they always say that about Michael Jordan, and of course Mike Tyson was like that. Yeah. Kobe said he learned it from Michael. That's like what he passed uh, on to him. Interesting. Yeah. There's such a rare person. Yeah. You know? and, and it's and it's rare that you could probably stand to be around them. Yeah, that's you the know? thing. Especially like your, your kind of, your, your tech billionaires. Or, you know? Right, like... Steve Jobs, yeah. like known by everyone as a extreme, yeah. <laughs> right? He was just a. <laughs> there's no way yeah. around it. Yeah, brutal. Do you remember that video? There's a video. It's uh, he's demonstrating uh, an Apple product, and he can't get this camera to work, and he's pressing on these buttons, it doesn't work, <laughs> and he throws it at the engineer Not with this like pursed lips. Uh huh. And he's like, here, you fix it. Okay. Uh -huh. See if you can get it to work. Yeah. Like, he just wants you well, fucking loser I'm in front of a million people. Yeah, and he can't. Uh, he, he can't can. lose his mind. This article reads, Steve Jobs seems to have been sociopathic, psychopathic, a narcissistic, or a cocktail of three. The evidence is overwhelming on this point. Before Apple began as a company in 1976, Steve Jobs screwed his Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak over fees and bonuses that Atari paid Jobs to design a chipset for the game Breakout. Jobs arranged the deal with Atari and then gave his work to his good friend Woz with the promise of a 50-50 revenue split. When it all settled out, Jobs kept $4,250 and only gave Wozniak $750. Jobs then lied to Wozniak about the payout amount. Come on, does that not sound like something MJ would do? It sounds like the same type of person, just within another job. They're both living legends who just had that killer instinct and needed to win at all cost. Steve Jobs went furious at his employees, and so did MJ on his teammates. It's the risk taking, the gambling, the dominance in trash talk, his overall charm, and the way that he was immensely cruel for the feelings of others, especially his own teammates. It just makes me question, how much of the trait fits into becoming a sociopath. But at the same time, he was productive, successful, and clearly able to be around people. He didn't have a lot of friends, but he had a lot of competitors who ended up being cordial later down the line. 
He was a functioning human being that reached the highest level in his profession. He was able to know when to pass the ball to win a game, even to the same teammate he would punch in the face. He genuinely tried to make his teammates better. He comes off, I'll be ready. In situations like that. Michael in traffic to curl. despite sometimes being hard on them. So in the end, one can speculate. Is he really a sociopath? That's the question. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Do you believe that Michael Jordan is really a sociopath? Or do you believe he's just an ultra competitive person? Let me know down below. With that said, it's been your boy Nick Smith. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new, hit the notification button and follow me on Instagram. With that said, I am out.